there, Lorenda Jones here, and I'm anxious to get you started into the world of harps, the world of Irish or lever harps or lap harps or small harps. They go by many names. So whether you're playing a small lap harp like this or a floor harp, whether it's made of wood or cardboard, whether it costs $500 or $5,000, you can get started and they all have their special place and special sound. I'm gonna uh, play uh, McFarlane's Lament on this small cardboard harp to let you hear the sound. And then we'll move over to the big harp for some technique exercises. Now, in this harp, I think you can see my fingers a little bit easier, and I'm going to show you just a couple of exercises that you can do to get started right away. I have my right hand, um, thumb and index finger in the proper position with thumb up and the index finger pointed down toward the sound box. And I'm going to start with an interval of a third, uh, the C above middle C and E. I have both of those anchored on the strings. So when I pull off, when I push off with my thumb, I have a lot of momentum for that tone to be produced. And when I pull in toward the palm of my hand, I get a really good tone. So start with just those two fingers Try to get a really good tone and give yourself plenty of time to relax in between each note. And let's try it with your left hand. I'm, this time I'll use the notes G and E just above middle C. So I'm on either side of this blue string. So E and G again both of my fingers anchored, push off with the thumb. Notice the thumb joint is going to bend over and then pull with the E. Listen to your tone. And let's put those two together and you'll hear this really lovely sound just with those two fra short phrases. As soon as I play this hand, I'm going to replace and just keep alternating. I don't play until my fingers are in place. Now let's take that same pattern, move our right hand up to the F and D, and our right hand up to the A and F. Now. Let's hear the sound we'll get on this minor chord. And I'm going to move back to where I started. I can make all kinds of patterns just by moving and shifting around up and down. If we want to come to an, um, more of an ending or a closing, I like to reverse and go up on that last one and then maybe pull together. 
So if I come up, I'm going to come up on the D and F. And the B and D. And then finish with the third in the left hand and one C in the right hand. So let's practice that last pattern. Coming up. And together. So now we can put it all together and we've got a really beautiful little pattern that can be used just as a meditative um, uh, melody or an introduction to a song in anything that you'd like to do with it. Nice and gentle. Back to the E and C. Let's reverse. Ah, let's do it all again. E and C and G and E. F and D and A and F. And C and G and E. Reverse D F B D. And then just by adding one other finger to that pattern, we can come up with triads. And then we can come close to playing the, uh, the McFarland's Lament that I started with. So if I add a thumb and, or I'm sorry, if I add the third finger, then I've got the triads, which are, is the building blocks, of course, of heart playing. Do I want to come up in reverse? I can do that. So now we've expanded what we started with just by doing a triad, C, E, G. And you can go either up or down. I did down. Moved it up one. Try it built on D, D, F, A. And back to the C. Now I'm going to reverse and go up from the B. C together. That's your main building block for what I was doing on McFarland's Lament. All built on triads.
So whether you're playing a small harp or a large harp, I hope you'll join me sometime and learn some great Irish tunes. We'll approach all of the tunes by ear. Um, I do share music if uh, folks want that after we've learned the song. I like for you to approach it directly on the strings. And so um, you really learn the principles and the building blocks of the song as we go. So I look forward to seeing you in class sometime.